Hi, and welcome to part two of over-engineering this boutique armor shop. If you haven't seen part one, I highly suggest you do so, or else this video won't make any sense at all. So link to that is in the description and in the iCard. So without further ado, let's get started. So in the last video, we finished the inventory and price management systems. So now it's time to start working on the storefront and getting everything connected together. So next up, we got to get the armor up to ground level. So I went ahead and chose kind of this level right above everything for ground level. And so we just have a regular item elevator that spits out all of the items here. And also we're going to be putting an armor stand here. And that's why it kind of does this weird question mark sort of shape. So if we were to chuck in some armor into this chest down here, we should see them make their way up. There we go, and all get dispensed onto an armor stand. So now I'm thinking we can manually request and send back the armor. So let's go ahead and yeah, why not? Choose number one, uh, activate that, click on that, and we should see it show up. Good stuff. All right, and then if we break it and then put the armor stand back into there, Choose a different one, like number three. Put the set of armor into the return line. Then we should see, all right, and it should come back up. There we go, and now we have number three, which is the iron armor. Sweet. So now with a filter for the armor stand and a return line for the armor, we should be good to do a more complete simulation. So let's see. Let's go ahead and, yeah. Let's request number three. We will activate that and push that button. We should see, there we go, that will show up. And so we go down here, we request number four for instance. And what we would do is instead of hitting that button, we would uh, just return it. Oh, hold on one second. Tile drops, very important. And let's hit that button, shoots an arrow, and we should see that piece of redstone light up, re-trigger, and whichever one was number four, I think it's gold. Yep, there it is, shows up, awesome. So now with the lectern being moved up to the top over here, and the selector button logic being implemented over here, and the in-stock indicator snaking its way all the way up here, and into this nifty little old school sand tower. The reason I needed to do this sand tower instead of say your traditional slime block tower over here is because this block, because of this torch, right? Needed to be both transparent and immovable if that was the case, which I mean, doesn't exist in the game at this point. So we needed to resort to this old school sand tower. So those of you who've been doing redstone for a while, you'll appreciate this one. But yeah, basically now, we can do a full run as long as I come down here and still, I still have to manually do that, but if we, yeah, let's request the leather armor. There we go. It has been marked out of stock. It comes up, which is awesome. Then I can swap it to, I think number two is chainmail. It is in stock. There we go. Oh, <laughs> we're still requesting number two. Hit the button, there we go, it should go away. Keep an eye on this lamp. It should turn off any second now, there we go. That means our chain mail is coming. And bingo, there we go, there's our chain mail. But now if we wanna check out the armor that's in the display case, then we need to push this button, right? And in pushing this button, we would wanna do two things. We want to shoot an arrow out of this dispenser here, but also we want to temporarily lock this hopper right here so that the armor can come down this chain and not drop into here, but instead drop into this dropper here, this dispenser, and right onto the player. So let's get that done. Okay, so a lot has changed since the last cut, but basically this button is now routed all the way up to this dispenser here. I don't need this button anymore. And it also triggers this pulse extender which is routed into this hopper here, which will lock this hopper for some amount of time. We also have this purple circuit here, which is a very small little item elevator to get stuff uh, up to the surface. 
just like so. And right here we have our first state management system, which is gonna be for checked out and not checked out. Right now it's in not checked out mode because the iron nugget is in this dropper. But when this elevator fires, it will move this nugget into this dropper, which will put it into checked out mode. And there's a couple things that happen there. First off, the payment chest and the return chest then become unlocked. As you can see when I move this from here, oops, over to here you can see that they both get unlocked oh hold on a second there we go now they get unlocked and not only that but we have a comparator on this side which is being routed all the way to here which is now disabling re-requests so when you have an armor actually checked out and the customer is wearing it then we probably don't want to allow the customer to then you know, request new things. So you can see this observer is being lowered down, but it can't power anything because this block has been pulled out of the way. So even if something is in stock, as you can see by this light here, you push this button and nothing happens until you put something back into the system. Now, in order to do or to detect that, I'm thinking I want to just have a line of observers looking at this uh, last redstone dot here because any change in that means that the customer has successfully returned their set of armor. So let's go ahead and hook up this output into the reset line of this RS Norlatch. All right, so now this observer is gonna be responsible for resetting this RS Norlatch. And this line is coming from this line of observers, which is gonna be looking at these last bit of redstone here for any sort of change. Now, they will fire every single time something is sent and every single time something is sent back, but we don't want it to trigger this RS Norlatch every single time. We only want to trigger it while the RS Norlatch is in checked out mode, meaning that an item is in here. So we've just gone ahead and forwarded the output signal into this line here, going into this piston, which will extend this block to go in front of this piece of redstone. So let's go ahead and test that out. So here we go. I'm gonna request number one, hit the button. This light should turn off, awesome. There we go. I like the look of that. I want to check it out. I'm gonna stand out of the way. There we go. All four of them have gone here. The armor stand has made its way back into there. These hoppers have unlocked. The nugget has moved over to here. This has been disabled. That's looking good. And then only when I completely return everything, we should see this switch over. Watch that line, there we go. Pulses, this is back, good to go. That is marked as in stock, and these hoppers are once again locked. Perfect. All right, now it's time to count the money. So my idea is that the money is coming into here, it's flowing into this dropper here, which is gonna be acting as a buffer. And then in order to keep the diamonds, we are gonna be counting the money one by one and dispensing them. And then once the machine has determined that the customer has paid enough, then we're going to unlock this hopper and the rest of it is going to drain out and be returned back to the customer via some sort of elevator. So the general challenge of this is going to be how do I make sure that only the amount that is required from the customer is going to be kept by this mechanism here. All right, so this works and it's probably one of the most janky things I have ever made, but it sure does work. So say an item costs four diamonds and I grossly overpay for it with six. So it starts counting three, four, and if you hit this button fast enough, it will stop the count, and then the rest of them should flow right through. As you can see, this torch turned back on, and we are good to go. Now I'll just kind of try to integrate this with this machine here, and this is the bot line. So we're gonna have to hook this up to the reset line of this RS Norlatch here. 
Okay, so I ran into something interesting during testing. Uh, in case you just happen to be following along, I'm not sure why you would, but if you are following along, this piston used to be one block higher, as with that one. Unfortunately, when I did something like select the first one, it would actually stay in the upward position due to quasi-connectivity. So I lowered it down one more block and added one more slime block. So make sure if you're doing this on your own world to do that as well. But back to here, uh, good news and bad news. The good news is that it works. So let's go over here, select one. It will come eventually. There it is. We decide to check it out because we like it. There we go. That will put it into purchase mode so that we can put stuff into that chest. And then this first item costs five diamonds. So if we go ahead and put in six diamonds, it will work. Now the bad news is it's really slow at counting money. It does work though. As you can see, the extra diamond did get flushed out. So yeah, unfortunately with this being a luxury shop, everything's gonna be pretty expensive. Probably in the several stacks of diamonds kind of range, which will uh, take forever to count. But hey, look, this system is keeping track of 15 different prices at once. So uh, it's fine, right? It's fine, it's fine. Also, while rebuilding it, I noticed that this didn't have to be a target block, so it's no longer a target block. Next step is to route the buy line over to the reset part of the checked out because we want to make sure that the system resets once it detects that the player has purchased the item. Speaking of which, we should see, yes, five iron nuggets here. Um, I added a bunch of hoppers and barrels underneath these uh, hopper minecarts so that we never have to deal with them again. They'll just get emptied into here. So now a quick item filter for the diamonds and a line of hoppers going down to the buffer. We want to make sure that the customer doesn't attempt to return their items while their payment is being processed because that could lead to some really messy situations. So let's figure out if we can route the fullness of this dropper all the way up to here. So there we go while a payment is being processed, this light will stay on and also we'll turn this comparator off, which will lock this hopper. Now in the case that the customer partially pays and still decides to return the item, then we need to do a refund system. So the idea for that is actually pretty simple, I think. Basically what we would need to do is we would need to hook up this line to a clock that is only active when the customer has partially paid, which we can get from this RSNOR latch. And there is some refund that remains to be processed. We can take that from this line. And the armor is no longer checked out, which we can get from this RSNOR latch right here. So the idea is to and those three signals together and hook them up to a clock and then hook that clock up to some sort of refund system that's gonna live down here. All right, so now that's done, you can see that this line right here is being anded, or I guess more accurately, it's it's actually a NAND gate or a not AND gate, the opposite of an AND gate. Uh, that is running into this repeater, which is disabling this clock. And this clock is just permanently attached to this refund line. And also, we wanna make sure that this partially paid RS nor latch gets a reset every single time that the refund line turns off. So I've just gone ahead and connected this line to this repeater back down to this piston, which will then pulse this repeater, which will turn that off when this line turns off. Oh, and you can also see that this clock is hooked up over top of this AND gate and leading straight to this dropper. Now, as you can see, this is the buffer dropper, which will be dropping items into this chest. This chest has a hopper right underneath it, which is going to be putting items into this dropper. So all the money, technically this right here, this chest hopper dropper combo is the total bank of the system. So everything's gonna be draining into here. And so if ever someone needs a refund, it's going to be pulsing out of there. And the pulses will be coming from this 
the blue line here. So I think that about makes us ready for a full scale test here, so hold on one second. Yeah, so number two is the quote expensive one. So let's go ahead and choose number two up top. So now we're in the shop. We're gonna go ahead and choose number two. It says it is in stock. We hit the button, it goes out of stock. As you can see, it gets dispensed right in front of us. We like the way it looks. There we go, it gets dispensed. As you can see, no matter what else we choose, uh, including one, we cannot request it because of that piston there. You can see that the return and the payment hoppers are now unlocked. So I only brought 14 diamonds with me. This thing costs 22. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put all 14 diamonds in. We should also see, yep, there we go. The payment is currently being processed. So we'll wait for it to finish being processed. You can see that this hopper just got locked as well. And so it should finish processing my 14 diamonds pretty soon here. Um, yep, there we go. Yeah, the system is a little bit slow, but it is at least accurate. So we should see if we go down here that there should be 14 items. Yep, in this refund uh, dropper over here. So now I've decided, nah, I can't afford this and I don't want it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and return this even though I've paid some and what should happen is we should start seeing this line pulse there we go two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen and fourteen there we go everything reset and we should see fourteen diamonds here which when hooked up to an elevator, will bring it all the way back up to me. That is perfect. And there we go, regular glass elevator, just like that. And with that, I actually believe that's all the functionality we need. How about we dress this thing up and take it out for a real world test? Ah, what a beautiful day of me minding my own business and oh, look at that beautiful shop in the middle of nowhere for no particular reason. I wonder what it sells. Oh, looks like it's some kind of like luxury clothing shop. Okay, let me enter. Ooh, nice and open, luxurious. Okay, I like the, the models here. Oh, okay, so this must be the catalog. Okay. Oh, okay, so only six things. All right, that makes sense. I mean, these these armors are definitely a, a pain to craft. So all right, let's let's take a look at these one by one. Uh, okay, green by Emmy Rald. Okay, 20, 25 diamonds. Let's take a look. How much you want to bet it's green? Ooh, nice. I like it. I mean, I mean, not exactly my color though. Uh, I mean, if I had like a green ring, then maybe. But um, no, I think I think I'll pass on that. How about okay, Zhang Moshang, the purple collection. 56, okay, quite a bit more expensive. Let's take a look at what that's all about. Oh, sweet, now that, that's quite stylish. I like that one. Let, let's see what, what else they have to offer. Breezy by Medieval Designs, okay. Oh yeah, that's breezy, all right. You'll you'll definitely feel the wind under that. That's that's for sure. I'm um, not sure if I'm a huge fan of the color combination. Okay, let's let's take a look over here. Past L, winter collection. Ooh, I like that. Okay, nice colors. Uh, still not exactly my style, but I like it. I see what they're going for. Okay. Depth by Mine, 46 diamonds. Let's take a look at that one. Oh, okay, yeah, lots of different ores on this one. Uh, also not my style, definitely bold though. And uh, the last one, Bling by Fresh Gapple, 69 diamonds, nice. The most expensive one as well. Let's see what that one looks like.
Oh, dang, that one is fresh. Take a look. Wow. I like the look of that. That is a nice little combo. You know, a little party on top, a little frill on the, on the cap there. I like that. I don't know if it's quite my style, but okay, so I, I stand on this right here, right? Click that. Oh, that is nice. Oh, and I look good too. I like that. I like that a lot. And uh, oh, looks like I've been locked in <laughs> until I pay for this thing or perhaps return it. Um, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll buy it, I guess. Yeah. How much does this cost again? Oh, shoot. 69. Oh, I got to get my money back. Oh, yeah. I, I got to wait for it to count the money that I did give it. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Oh, man, this looks good, but I'm gonna have to say goodbye to it, unfortunately. Oh, man. It hurts. It hurts. Here we go. Oh, it went back. Oh, cool. I'm free to leave now. Oh, looks like I'm getting... <gasps> I'm getting refunded. Let's see if we get to a stack. Nice, fully refunded. I like that. That's good. Okay. So you know what? You know, bling by Fresh Gapple, a bit out of my price range, a bit adventurous for me. I think I think I gotta go with uh, with Old Reliable. I like this uh, black and purple, man. I really did. I liked it a lot. Yeah, that's definitely my style. I'm gonna check that one out. Oh yeah. That's, that's definitely it. I like that. All right, I'm just gonna chuck in the full stack. I should get my money back, right? Yeah, let's just let that count up for a bit. Right about now, I'm kind of regretting making the prices so high. Oh, there we go. I think I've actually, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. I've bought it. It's letting me out. Oh, and I'm getting some return. I got eight back. Let's see. Yep, 56 plus eight, 64. Nice. All right, I am one happy customer today. So yeah, that about wraps up this two-part series on over-engineering this boutique clothing shop. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned some from it. If you did, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. But speaking of likes, I've gotten quite a few comments on prior videos asking for world downloads, and as a very small channel, I'm a little bit reluctant to giving out world downloads due to Redstone Thieves, but you know what, this one I think is actually packed with a lot of useful stuff that a lot of you could probably take use of and perhaps iterate and improve on yourself. So if this video hits a thousand likes, I promise you I'll find out some way to get a world download to you, because uh, I owe you one. But yeah, that's about it, so uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.